again, welcome back to XMediaRx. Today we're going to be talking about ovulation tests. Exactly how do they work and how do you use them? But before we start, a little disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a fertility expert, and um, this is just information that I found along our own trying to conceive journey that I thought it would be handy to put into little easy to digest videos, because sometimes when you start these things, it can be really overwhelming, and you just need someone to sit down and explain it to you. And of course, everybody is different, and we're just gonna be talking about the general science here behind all of this stuff. Not everybody's bodies and cycles work the same, depending on different underlying conditions or any hormonal imbalances that might be going on. So I'd say take these videos as a starting point, a jumping off point really for your own research um, to make it fit for you personally and your journey. Okay, so what exactly are ovulation tests? Ovulation tests are an at-home, we on a stick, <laughs> urine test that checks for the levels of LH hormone in your system. But what is LH hormone? I hear you cry. Well, we have a multitude of different hormones in our body that work together in different ways to make our menstrual cycle work. Now there's always a level of luteinizing hormone in our systems, but just before ovulation, there is a big surge of LH and it's that surge that triggers the follicle to release an egg causing ovulation. Usually ovulation tends to happen around 12 to 24 hours after that surge of LH hormone. So by measuring the levels of LH in our system we can accurately predict when that surge is happening and time our sex for conception. Now the only way to guarantee that ovulation has happened is by checking with a scan which obviously isn't accessible for the majority of people. So at home ovulation kits can be a really great way for you to get a rough idea of when ovulation might be occurring in your body. They're not going to be for everybody and you certainly don't have to use them. There are other ways to find out whether you are in your fertile window and whether you are ovulating. I've got a whole video on that if you want to check that out. I personally really liked using ovulation tests at home during our try and conceive journey. I feel like it gave me a sense of control over the situation and I just love having as much information about my body as possible. But how do you actually use ovulation kits? Well, very similar to a pregnancy test, you either wee on the stick or you dip the stick into a pot of your urine and read the results. But unlike a pregnancy test, you're gonna need to take multiple of these tests every single cycle to try and pinpoint when that LH surge is happening. As standard, there are digital ovulation tests and there are analog ovulation tests. And I've got a whole video talking about the pros and cons for each and which ones I found to be the best during our journey. So digital tests, they give you a positive or a negative reading as to whether they've picked up the LH surge. And it's actually pretty easy to use them. Analog tests, however, you need to read yourself by comparing the control line to your test line. The aim is to do these tests once or twice a day until your test line is as dark, as strong and as thick as the control line, or in some cases, even darker, stronger and thicker. It can be a little bit more confusing using the analog tests versus the digital ones, but there are a lot of benefits for doing it that way, which I do cover in that other video. So how do these tests fit into your trying to conceive journey? Well, unlike what we were taught in school, it's very, very rare for somebody's menstrual cycle to be exactly 28 days long and for ovulation to sit smack bang in the middle on day 14. That ovulation day can vary from person to person and also month by month. So in order to pinpoint when our fertile window is and when ovulation is happening, we need to start tracking our cycle. Luckily for you, <laughs> I have a whole video on that. It's a really good idea to start tracking your cycle in multitude of different ways um, to help pinpoint when that fertile window is. You don't have to just use ovulation tests. There are natural biomarkers that your body gives off, such as cervical mucus or discharge, your basal body temperature and cervix position, for example, that can all indicate when you're fertile and when you're not. However, at the very start of your journey, you might want to start ovulation testing from the day your period finishes until you get a positive result. This just helps make sure that you're not missing your surge and your ovulation if you tend to ovulate maybe earlier on in your cycle. But as you go along with this, as you get a little bit more practiced, as you start tracking, you'll be able to narrow down that window and use less tests each month because you'll have a good idea of when ovulation might be coming in for you. 
But do remember that this ovulation day can change month by month depending on a variety of different factors. So it's always a good idea to track your cycle every month rather than doing it once and then just assuming that it happens on that day for you, if that makes sense. All you have to do is wee on a stick or dip your stick into a pot of your urine depending on which test you're using and then wait for the results. Each different brand of ovulation tests will work slightly differently with different timings, so do make sure to double check that on the box, but that's pretty much how you do things. And you'll either see a positive test straight away, or you might have to wait a couple of days and keep testing until that surge happens. And you might see, if you're using analog tests, the tests getting darker and darker. You can either take photos of your tests on your phone, um, you can sellotape them to a piece of paper so you can see the lines getting darker, or some analog tests come with apps so you can scan your test into the app and it helps plot them onto a graph and pinpoint when that surge is. It's very, very clever. Now, unlike pregnancy tests where you take them with your first wee of the day, first thing in the morning, and there's actually some evidence to suggest that it might be better to do ovulation tests a little bit later on in the day. Just try to make sure that you've got a two hour hold before you take the test, which means you haven't been to the toilet for two hours, just to give your urine a high enough concentration to be able to pick up on the tests, but don't dehydrate yourself in the process. And once you've got your positive ovulation test, either with that smiley face on the digital ones or with that really thick, dark test control line, you can time your sex perfectly for conception for the ovulation that will hopefully be following your surge. I hope that helped in some way explain the weird and wonderful world of ovulation testing. If it did, please do give this video a giant thumbs up and any questions, leave them in the comment box down below. And if you did find it useful and you're not yet subscribed, click the subscribe button, check out my playlist because um, there's loads of other videos around cycle tracking, hormones, menstruation, fertility, and also pregnancy if you're interested in that. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon.